Hello and welcome to Drunkards and Taverns, the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that knows that drunk people have terrible ideas, but we roll with them anyway. So we are now into our second recording session. So we have uh, everyone back with us. First of all, Noons, how, how, how are you? You feeling a bit better? I'm good. I'm great. I'm ready to go. I feel like I've caught up slightly, but I'm still going to still gonna need a recap. Or, or what, You're going to need a recap? <laughs> but, um, Do you remember anything? <laughs> I remember we played a game. I remember that... Um, I didn't introduce my character. I remember <laughs> oh, lots, of, lots of things. And I can't wait to re-meet Sartori. Okay, well, I mean, if you need a recap, then clearly we need someone to give a recap. And who better than today's drunkard, Abby, a.k.a. Moth. Um, so, yeah, Abby, ha- how, how are you? You all right? Good. Uh, I don't mix drinks because I'm a lightweight, but I'm two glasses of wine and a very large gin down. So, so you've mixed gonna drinks. Hit really mixed drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to hit me real soon. Um, okay, so uh, give us a recap of what we got up to in our last recording session. Oh, Lord. Uh, it was a mess, I guess, really. Uh, <laughs> so the party was introduced with Gallus Moth. Check. Uh, <laughs> Satori, Frida, and Teapot. Did I say that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, we were headed to Hupperduk to deliver some wines and alcohol that belonged to my family's winery. Um, I was a, a stowaway on said delivery. Uh, then we met the crazy old man who talked about ears for a while, Teapot, and. Uh, <laughs> Travel, travel to Hupperduke. Uh There was some trouble then, some some th- good old trouble. As the oh my god, I can't even remember where. Oh, you were doing so uh, well. <laughs> I was like, this is flawless. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really trying hard. I was like, um, there were people, and then something happened. <laughs> <laughs> there was an explosion at the prison. Yep. We saw people running. There was a very tall lady who was a Goliath, and then we found out that she was the one that everyone was worried about escape I- escaping. So now we're trying to find out how this happened i have crabs also <laughs> <laughs> so, amazing for the people alone it's just like what what <laughs> <laughs> yeah man she got a crab she has a mechanical crab right okay it's the new variant I, God. It's a new... <laughs> <laughs> yeah but also noons you noons in your catch-up episode you said you had a pet dragon like what i, I do have a pet dragon <laughs> do you? We'll, we'll get to that we'll, we'll get, get to, we'll to wushu in a minute <laughs> Um, yeah, so we uh, uh, went to Hupperduke, there was an explosion, you went and uh, did some studying around the uh, the explosion site, um, and then went on a little bit of a detective hunt to see if you could figure out who escaped and where they went and stuff like that. We talked, um, yeah, we talked to a lot of people with very yeah. gnomish names. Sorry, that was very bad, I apologise. It's alright. <laughs> I was going to give you inspiration if it was good, but you're not getting it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Um, okay, so let's just do a quick introduction of Sartori, how he was meant to be introduced. Oh, shit. Okay, so you, the way you would have seen him was he um, has this kind of like medium length spear that he's able to like slash and spray with. On his, in his pocket, he, on his lap kind of, he's got a, oh, what color was he? Uh, it's like a purple-ish a pseudo dragon named Busha. Um, oh this, is very, this is very. So, this is a crazy record. Which is just <laughs> very, and yeah, by the way, there was a dragon. There, there was the a dragon there the whole time. <laughs> um, Surprise, <clears throat> bitch! Um, who, I, who, I, who I believe Ed will be, will be voicing. So I'm, I'm, yet, I'm, I'm, yet to, I'm, yet, I'm yet to meet that. Um, he's a tiny. He's a tiny dragon. A tiny like, dragon. He, yeah. He's like he's less than a foot long. Pip squeak. A tiny dragon in your lap. Tiny dragon okay. in my behave. <laughs> <laughs> behave. But apart from that, he's he's pretty much. Uh, the way I pseudo described, he's still got the dreads. He, we, we, we won't retcon the carrying bob out because that was pretty cool. I like the carrying bob. <laughs> um, basically, he's just cool, calm, collected, and um, cool. not giddy <laughs> like me. Everything, was, was everything you were last time. Everything I was last, <laughs> yeah, uh, last yeah, time. Do you know what? That. I think we got a pretty good version of Satori but, last time. You, so. you, you did. So let's 
let's pick up where we left off. So you had returned after doing a bit of detective work to the Filthy Star, um, where Brief Stout Collar had let you had a free bed to lay your heads for the night. And you wake up in the morning uh, as the sun rises, about half past seven in the morning, and you find yourself in a rather cramped room. It's definitely not meant for five people, um, but you wake up, you know, one on the bed, someone's on the floor. It's it's it was a cramped night, but it was a free night. Um, what do you want to do? Just looking at Moth now, uh, Abby. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Moth. Good morning, Moth. <laughs> I wake up from where I've been stood upright, leaning against the um behind the door, like just <laughs> leaning up, <laughs> sleeping upright like a like a two by four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> morning, everyone. How are we feeling? I'm just gonna grunt. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, Gallus. Thank you. Um, good Fresh, conversation. I, I got a full two hours. <laughs> oh. In the mornings, I, it's usually the time that I polish my wine harp. So I'm just sat on the end of the bed. Maybe I've been up before everyone else, and I'm just polishing my wine harp. Ready is that for the what day. is that what the kids call it these days? The Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you start to get this smell of cooking bacon and. Uh, fresh bread sort of starting to waft under the door um, and you can hear there's a couple of people um, down in the filthy star having an early morning breakfast the smells of uh, coffee being carried on on the wafts <laughs> yeah follow that smell i yeah. say Gallus has <laughs> already left so you come out on uh, through into <clears throat> sort of the main area the common area in the filthy star and there's a couple of people dotted about um, you see uh, behind the counter is Brief Stout Collar. He raises a hand to you and uh, suggests that you should uh, take a seat and have some have some breakfast um, before you sort of plan your day. Yes, I yes. will go and sit. So you take a seat and he comes over. He's like, oh, so um, do you want just like a normal breakfast? Uh, bit of the uh, bit of the coffee, is it? The full works, please. I think we've got a big day ahead of us. Uh, I... my, my good man. Um, hello. Uh, you were offering the coffee, uh, but I was wondering if I could possibly request something else um it is uh possible for you perhaps if it's okay with you to uh take some finely ground dry leaves and to pour boiling water on top of them thus allowing them to create a sort of potion um galas galas is gonna just slowly slip his hand over the teapot's mouth and just say just bring the men a tea (laughs) i'll um i'll bring a tea over this way that's absolutely fine how did you know that's what it's called? Uh, do you want it in a cup or do you want it in a, in a teapot? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a teapot, please. Uh, I'll bring one. And I wink to the rest of the party. <laughs> 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 so he goes off and he starts to fetch some food and um, shortly he brings it back. And there is a, a plate of bacon, some eggs and some bread to sort of make little uh, uh, little sandwiches out of. This is um, when the whole first episode is just breakfast. <laughs> breakfast, 100%. Um, and... It's up to you um, what you want, want to do. I think the last thing that you'd heard is the uh, the red clay that you'd collected um, from the street. You were directed to uh, the lay of the land, which is a herbalist shop down in the iron lot. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I believe it's Zendasa. Zendasa, apparently. Um, that's what the man and his lovely daughter, Cliff, Cliff Tinkertop, and his daughter, Racer, um, said. Nice. Nice. Um, so yeah, you have a, a, a hearty breakfast and set yourself up for the day. It's about um, half past eight by the time you actually set out, and you start making your way through uh, through the iron lot. Navigating the winding streets of the iron lot, you find a wedge-shaped hut of smoke-stained thatch and warped wood. A faded sign bearing the name Lay of the Land dangles above the door. Entering the shaded interior, you're greeted by all manner of smells. Pungent fungi to dried weeds and burning incense. A woman turns towards you as she eats at a corner table. Her smiling mouth half filled with food and her voluminous black hair framing her face. Oh, hey there. How's it going? You um, here to buy some, uh, buy some bits from me? I can, uh, I've got some good <laughs> candles. I've got... Uh, like, oh, you might want some perfume. I've got lots of little bits. You might want to take away my little eggs. Bella, <laughs> is this your mum? Mummy? Sadly, no, it's not. I can be your mummy if you want me to. I could uh, lay your head on my knee and stroke your hair. Um, make this make is you feel a bit real strange. good. 
<laughs> what can I interest you in? You know, Gallus, if you don't take up that offer, it sounds quite inviting. I might say yes. <laughs> um, this time, Frida takes her hand and puts it over the teapot's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Um, we are oh, here. Aren't you, we... a, aren't you a crazy looking one? Oh, oh thank you. you. You're very small. Uh, yes, th- that's, um, that's uh, a curse with my, my knees. They didn't grow the way they were meant to be. <laughs> You know, most people don't talk about it, but, um, you know, <coughs> yeah, judge, ju- don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, you just judged me. It's fine. Whatever. Ah, it's fine. yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we, we all forget that. Uh, hello, I'm Moth. Uh, nice to meet you, Moth. My name is Indessa. Uh, welcome to the Lay of the Land. It's my herbalist shop. Um, I've got uh, all manner of um, uh, herbs and stuff that you might want. Yes, we're looking for information and we were told that you might be the one to help. Um, I've not heard of that plant, but, uh, you know, maybe I know it by a different name. Um, who had the, the little vial of red mud clay thing? I think you two. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have it? Yeah, I, I, think, think you have. I think anything that we found or learnt or you discovered had. last episode, Moth, yeah. Moth, is with you. Oh, yeah. you're really going to regret this tonight. <laughs> okay, I will, I will pull out the vial uh, past the crab and I will... Um, we, so, so we have been sent by Watchmaster Bran. I'm so glad I wrote so many notes last week. Fuck me. My God. Um, <laughs> we have been sent by Watchmaster Bran. We are looking into the explosion at the prison... Oh, yeah. And yes, uh, and we found this red clay on the perpetrator's trail, and we wondered if maybe you would know the source of said clay. I could take a little look at it if you'd like. Um, yes, she that a hand. I will hand it over. So she takes it off you and um, sort of breaks it up a little bit between her fingers and has a little feel of it. Ah, oh, yes, um, uh, oh, that lovely from... foley. That was great, wasn't it? That pour of wine. That of wine. That's all <laughs> right. Do it with my my big uh, my big speech, but that's fine. Go again. Oh, Ed, no, go again. Sorry. <laughs> go again. Go, start again. Come on, Ed. Go again. It's fine. That's a that's a total lie. I've got to make something bullshit up now. Uh, um. Oh yes. So uh, this uh, this it's not from inside the city. Um. I think you, last time I saw anything like this, it was up on the Silverquell Ridge. Uh, you know the, the the mountain range just um just outside of the walls. Uh, you'd have to travel uh, maybe half a day to get up there but uh yeah you should probably find some of it up there gallus just says right thank you very much that's good to know let's go and just turns to leave are you sure you don't want to um just buy something from my shop i just um i gave you some information for free and um, you know well if we're going to be traveling up to the mountains what do you recommend uh um i could uh you know i've got some um uh, i've got a potion of healing that might help you out that mm. sounds good. Maybe, maybe, um, do you buy any chance of any, like, tea leaves? And I look at teapots. Oh, yeah, I got some tea leaves over here. Um, what sort of thing do you want? We got some, um, s- some English. <laughs> English <laughs> some English breakfast Ooh. tea. English some PG tips. tips. <laughs> some PG tips and some Yorkshire tea. You, you don't obviously know me very well, um, in Sandasa, but uh, I'm quite a, uh, Wound up person, some people have said, and so maybe some kind of calming tea. I've been oh. recommended in the past. Oh, yeah, I've got, I, I can do some of that. Uh, it'll be a gold for uh, like one, a portion, but you get a, a good uh, a good teapot out of it. Yes, yes, you she would. Take, she, brings, <laughs> <laughs> she brings out a little bag of these um, dried leaves. Uh, I wouldn't use too much of it. Um, might make you a little bit sleepy. Um, but just the right amount and you'll be nice and calm all day. That would be very nice. Thank you very much. And I hand nice. her the gold coin. And almost as if it is quite still an exciting event for me to hand over money and receive something in return. Nice. Uh, p- pleasure doing business with you. If you ever want to come back, then, you know, we've got lots of, lots of things here. Um, lovely meeting you all. Uh, I was wondering, I was wondering if, um, hey Zen, how you doing? Um, Ooh. do you have any, um, incense at all oh uh, yeah i can do you some incense thank um, you how much are you looking for just enough to last us a couple of weeks i need to get my meditation um, on I'm feeling a little bit down i mean that depends what you're going to be using it for like if you just uh, want to like light a little stick and make it smell quite nice can probably do uh, a month's worth um 
uh, five silver. Want a you know little bit of it a day? Or, Perfect, thank or if you. You're going to use it for like like some of the spells and stuff. Uh, then you might buy a little bit more. I don't dabble in those spells. I don't understand what that is. But um, <laughs> I could uh, I could do it with a day today thing. That'd be great. Thank you. My little friend here, Wusha. Wusha would like. He's looking a little bit peaky right now. And he, the Wusha just pokes his head out. It's t- literally just a tiny little miniature yeah. dragon. Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's been he's been over time, Muff. We've, we've cleaned up and paying attention, um, but it's okay. <laughs> That's a lovely <laughs> surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you look over, and he's like uh, <laughs> looking over at this. Uh, and there's a jar which has got some bugs in it. Mm. And he's like snapping at it, trying to eat them. How much for the jar? Oh, that. Um, oh, they're 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 very expensive bugs, you know. Um, uh, five copper. Five copper, five <laughs> copper, and five silver. That that doesn't seem that much to me. So, um, yeah, sure. Ooh. I don't know. Got, Let's throw it a gold. Money bags in here. Oh, we'll throw in a gold, and we'll see what happens, right? I, don't, I, don't oh, that, oh. I mean, you you come back here anytime you want, and I'll um make you a, a proper cup of tea, like. No worries. I think I think my friend over here would uh, be very happy. With lucky, that as lucky well. bugger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, well, uh, have a nice have a nice up the silver quill. Um, uh, just be careful. Some of the edges are quite precarious. Galas has stood uh, by the door, by the way, uh, with the door open, just his hand on the door going, this is the first time a hunt for a dangerous escapee of a prison has started with 25 minutes in a bloody tea shop. <laughs> Let's go. Do you need some of that calming tea there? Uh, and he's just going to slam the door. <laughs> I follow. I'm so sorry about him, Zendata. He is, he, we're working on it, I promise. He's just got some issues, I think. I'm not it's quite sure yet. Uh, we get yeah, some travellers um, in here. What what is this Silver Quell Ridge like? What what's it like to fit terrain wise? I mean, it's a mountain ridge, like so. There's you know, it's it's high up. It'll probably take you like six hours to hike up there. Um, you've got the falls, the the waterfall up there that drops down towards Hopper Duke. Um, it's uh, you know, there's there are some like things like wolves and stuff like that. You might want to like keep an eye out for some tracks, but um, you know, it's it's, it's it, it's quite dangerous, but, um, you know, people like yourself, that, that, that big lad, he had a, a great big X, so I imagine he'd be fine. Is there any, has there ever been any cobalt sighted there? Not that I'm aware, like, not in recent times, but, um, you know, there could be, there's lots of caves and stuff, so they might be hiding in a cave. At this point, Gallas and I start knocking from the other side of the door because we're absolutely impatient to get out of the fuck, tea shop. Fuck me, Teapot. Aren't they horrifically <laughs> impatient? It's so rude. Martha, I think we gotta go. We Gallas gotta, just says, I do have a great big X and I'm not afraid to use it. He's so brave. Okay, well, um, lovely meeting you guys. And like I said, there's a cup of tea here when you want it. Thank you very much, Sendasa. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Goodbye, Sendasa. Farewell. Okay. Nice. Come on, we'll um, And now. you start heading to the Silver Quill Ridge? Yeah. Yes. I think those um, other two really want to go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as as we're walking out, I'm just going to kind of nudge an elbow into Frieda and be like, your your brother's, um, he's, he's quite, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Frida like, just raises one eyebrow and goes, "Yes." I mean, he he's into it today, isn't he? Into what, Moth? <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying, he seems quite like chill today. It's, it's quite. Quite he nice. is very from one sleep to another moth. He's a different man. <laughs> Does a real bed do that to him? Absolutely, yeah. Yes, I agree. As the party make their way out of Hupperduke and start to head to the Silberquell Ridge, let's take some time to let you know who won the last dice giveaway and remind you that for the next week, a new competition is running on our Instagram at Drunkards and Taverns. So the winner of the last giveaway was to Tom Trey. Now, we'll be in touch and get those dice sent out to you. Don't forget to follow us on our social medias. We're on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and help spread the word. Anyway, 
back to the show. So you leave the smoky atmosphere of the city for the cleaner mountain air as you start to begin your hike up the treacherous heights of the Silberquell Ridge. The steep climb grows more and more precarious as you go, with pathways becoming thin and hard to traverse amongst the cliffside trees and grey rock of the mountainside. You keep the silver line of the tumbling waterfall always in your sights as a hopeful guide towards your destination. And you start making your way up to the cliffs. Um, it's all been pretty straightforward. You've never been too close to the edge. But you get to a point now where, to get right up to the, the ridge line itself, you're going to have to walk along a, a very narrow ledge, basically. How would you like to do it? Who would like to go first? I'll go first. Oh. I'm pretty nimble. Are you sure, sort of like howling around your feet. The odd pit, bit of snow just being picked up. Um, roll a... Um, I, either an athletics or a uh, acrobatics for how you make your way across. I will be rolling an acrobatics. 17. 17. Uh, Plus so three, yeah. 20, sorry. 20, Ooh, 17, perfect. so modify 20. So you start making your way across. You're not actually using any handholds of the wall at all. You are perfectly balanced as you make your way across. And you do it with uh, the greatest of ease. In fact, you, you made everyone else slightly more confident that it's not as tricky as it is. I round it off with a cartwheel. When I get to the other side. Uh, you run it off with a cartwheel um, and you kick a tiny bit of rock loose um, and it makes an even better handhold. So it's actually slightly easier for everyone else now. Uh, okay, who's going next? I'll go next. I don't want my sister to be alone. So um, I'm going to go next. Nice. Uh, so Satori, uh, again, athletics or acrobatics? It'll be acrobatics. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. What was that? That was uh, 12 plus 5, 17. How are you doing it? How are you getting across? Um, acrobatically. So no, he's just going to be like... Um, <laughs> Is is it like a was it a cliffside and then like a little ledge? Cliffside with a small ledge. Yeah, he's just going to be like shimmying across it, like trying to climb up, trying to find the best route. Perfect. Who yeah. who's next? Uh, I'll I'll go. Galas will go. Um, cool. I'm going to use uh, some athletics, which I'm proficient nice. in. Um, so that's a plus five. Uh, oh no! Devastating critical fail. I've rolled a one. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. But this could be bad, couldn't makes it? it si- the plus five makes it six. But he's a big old lump, so maybe he's got caught. So you see Galas, he gets up onto this cliff, cliff face, and, and because of how his great axe is on his back, he realises that he's not actually going to be able to fit on the ledge, so he actually has to start climbing his way across um, using foothold and handholds. He reaches out to one handhold, and you hear this crack as he starts to weight it. His hand just flies down by his side and so he looks down to where his hand is and you see this huge chunk of rock spiraling out of your vision. He just, he just shouts out. Oh, he shouts out, oh, I've got too much power, too much strength, God damn it. <laughs> you, you start to slip with your other hand, landing on the, um, on the ledge below you. What does everyone else do? You've got to move fast. Can I move with my decks and just run across and try and hold him? Uh, yeah, roll a, um, a a dex saving throw. Me? Okay. While he's doing that, can I grab my ukulele out of my bag and lift it out for him to catch? This is not the time for music! Okay. I don't want um, to hear at, a lullaby! In reaction, can I... Uh, I uh, At the same time, I also uh, go into my pocket and I pull out a tiny feather and I whisper a little sweet nothings into it before flicking it with my forefinger towards him, casting feather fall. Nice. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this feather sort of like, it pops forward and then almost like a dart just starts speeds over towards you. It touches you. You don't feel any difference at the moment, but um, uh, Teapot did something. Sorry, Satori, what did you roll? I got an 18. An 18. Um, Satori jumps across using the handhold that Frida had made. He uses that with one hand mm-hmm. and reaches around and is able to get your, get his hand behind you and is able to just lift you back up onto the wall and helps you the rest of the way. Oh, that was a test. I thought we needed a test to, to you know, just uh, make sure we're working as a team. And you're passed. Well done. You're passed. <laughs> uh, roll, roll a uh, deception just to see how well you told that lie. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I told that lie seven. <laughs> so uh, on, my, on my ukulele, I play... Wap, 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 wap. <laughs> as he was lying he still had beads of sweat on his top lip for how scared he was <laughs> yeah i'm gonna lean into teapot like and behind my hand be like he didn't mean to do that <laughs> it's lucky that we were all there to do something uh teapot teapot and moth how are you getting across um well uh <laughs> since casting featherfall which actually hits five people 
Uh, so we all are probably experiencing a little bit of buoyancy right now. I kind of like quite proud of myself, like take two steps back before trying to doing a little running jump. And hopefully it'll allow me to kind of go boy and like glide slowly across. Uh, y- y- why not? Uh, yeah, <laughs> go on then. Uh, roll, um, roll athletics to see how far you can jump. See if you can make it. Okay. I'm going to take a step back. <laughs> Wise move. Eleven. <laughs> Teapot lifts up his long cloak, unveiling the most spindly spider legs with knobbly knees Ugh. you've possibly ever seen, and starts running towards the edge of this thing. He jumps up over the over the the, the valley that is um, that you can see down below you, Hopper Duke, sort of like down below you. Um, he rises up in a normal jump, but then descends in a lovely glide, and just his tips of his toes land on the other side as he makes the gap. Ah, expel just as much energy as one needs. That's what I always find's best. <laughs> I've literally got Merlin of like sword of a stone like cartoon in my oh brain my now. <laughs> yeah, no one needs literally to my head now. <laughs> yeah. And as I walk off, I hum to myself, Abakazoo. <laughs> Stop <laughs> humming it. We have to pay. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's right less than five seconds. It's fine. <laughs> uh, moth. I mean, I guess I'll just... I mean, how long is the, like, ledge? Is it quite a length or enough to foot. jump? I mean, you've got Featherfall cast on you as well, so you'll probably get the same sort yes. of benefits as Teapot did. I have the long leggies as well, so I will try and jump it, cool. I guess. Okay. Maybe. We'll nice. see. Roll, roll athletics for me. See how we go. Athletics. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Oh God! Can it not be Dex? <laughs> oh, you can, yeah, you can do. Uh, yeah, you can maybe uh, bounce off the wall. Little uh, wall okay. running. Cool. Uh, par- parkour. Oh, you go man, full parkour. Drunk and confidence. Parkour. Yeah, plus four as well. Remember. Oh my God! Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. Thank, thank, drunk you, and thank you. Well thank you. Well thank you. Oh yeah, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank Christ. Okay, right, ten. Oh, oh wow. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you parkour off the wall. And it's only because Teapot is there, you grab his beard <laughs> as you're like leaning backwards. Galas grabs onto him, Sartori grabs onto him, and there is this line as you start to like peel backwards. Um, but with one one strong pull, they pull you back on, and you end up in a pile on Can the floor. Can Moth please <laughs> shout parkour throughout all of that? <laughs> parkour! Oh my god, yes. I will stand up and brush myself off. Thank you for the soft landing. <laughs> well... We're ready for anything. <laughs> <laughs> we may need to rethink our game plan at some point. <laughs> I can't wait for the dungeons and the dragons. <laughs> you start to have a, a, a little look around now. Um, the sound of rushing water starting to grow louder as you reach the top of the Silver Falls, which is where this red clay is meant to be. The impressive flow of water cascading down the mountainside towards Hupper Duke below. Around the crest of the falls... You can see that there's this rocky earth and it's this deep, rich red colour. Bing bang bong. I think that's the clay we were looking for. I think, yeah. You seem to be in the right sort of area. So yeah, you've got this um, waterfall that's um, peeling off. But there's nothing that you can initially see uh, without looking a bit further. I'm, I'm going to go up to the waterfall and see if I can just, I don't know. I was going to gonna peek behind it if you could like just touch through it, see if there's like, a hole behind it or... Or what? Yeah, 100%. You go up to the waterfall. Um, by the time you actually get there, you can see there are shadows behind the waterfall. Mm. And you sort of hold your hand up to it so you can redirect some of the water. It's quite strong, mm. but you realise that there is a, a ledge behind it which goes along this like um, red, um, rocky path, which seems to lead towards a cavern. Hey, guys, um, come look at this. There's something behind us. Well, uh, well, well. A secret door. Behind a waterfall. <laughs> How original. <laughs> <laughs> not sarcastic. And not, not even a hint of sarcasm in that. He is just like, wow. Um, well, I mean, judging on just how well that whole encounter just went, I do feel like we should just sit down and discuss what our game plan is here, if we have one at all. Well, Galas is going to go over and just... Um, can I roll an investigation on, or like around the waterfall, around the door, to see if there's any fresh tracks, to see if uh, it looks locked, see if there's any yeah. sign of any creatures around? You can roll a survival check for okay. tracking. Okay, cool. Um, 
Oh god. Four. <laughs> you start having a look. There's, there seems to be a lot of footprints here. You can't make out if it is humanoid or animal, but there, there seems to be traffic that comes through here. Um, you try and listen for any sort of like animal life or anything like that, but the, your, the noise of the waterfall is so overpowering that you can't hear anything. Cool. Um, there's no, there's no door. It kind of uh, through the little pathway. It kind of just opens up on the right hand side, right, right. Um, sort of leading into the curves of a cavern. Okay. Um, and this uh, pathway is about ten foot wide. So it's, it's much easier than than the one you were just on. Um, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna take out like my um, my little bag of bones from my uh, little waist and just play around with them for a bit. And just like really small bones, just be like, you throw it up in the air and it's like, should we proceed behind the waterfall or not? Yeah. The bones land in a perfect arrow. Mm. Other people can't, might not see it, but to you, it's a perfect arrow. And it seems to point towards the waterfall. Um, uh, guys, uh, I think the way we need to be going is behind this waterfall. Um, I feel like we need to capture this um, this big orc person and take it back to the uh, to I think. I have a name. It's Galas. <laughs> Not you, Galas. Um, the 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 lady is. What, 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 is she orc? What, what is she? She's Goliath. 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 Yeah, we need to take the. Uh, you get your creatures to... right, boy. Um, <laughs> I, I apologize. Attention. Um, Gallus in... just flicking through the creature compendium. <laughs> like, I think you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what is the marching order down this? Uh, who's going first? I think Sartori will. Second. Uh, I think Gallus. Now, he's more in his comfort zone out in the wilderness, hunting something, exploring something, yeah. and out of the city and the people. Uh, he's happy to go second to take second, the lead. Third. I'll go third, so I can protect anyone from the middle if I need to. Nice. Uh, uh, fourth. Do you want to go fourth, Teapot? Well, I I'd don't... love to, but I think as I went through the waterfall, I just looked back one more time and I was like, a door behind a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait for me! Thanks for listening to the show. Come back next week when we discover what's behind the waterfall and we find out who our next drunkard will be. Finally, we just want to say a thank you to Sirenscape for letting us use their sounds in our podcast. Sirenscape really is the best app for music and ambience in your roleplay games, with soundscapes from fantasy to sci-fi. Make sure you check them out on sirenscape.com. See you next week.